Welcome to an example of numerical integration. We want to use the trapezoid rule with n equals eight to estimate the given definite integral. So because n equals eight, that means we'll be using eight trapezoids to approximate this definite integral. We've already learned from a previous lesson, we'll be using this formula here when using the trapezoid rule. Notice how a and b are the limits of integration. So we start with b minus a divided by two n, which is the same as delta x divided by two, or one half delta x. Now if we look at the sum here, regardless of what the value of n is, we'll always have a coefficient of one on the first function, as well as the last function, and the remaining coefficients will always be two. But before we apply this formula, let's take a look at a Wolfram demonstration to visualize how this works. While this blue function is not our function, if we were trying to estimate the definite integral of this function over this interval with two trapezoids, it would look like this. And the whole idea is, as the number of trapezoids increase, it will approach the value of the definite integral. Or in our case, because this function is non-negative, we can say as the number of trapezoids increases, the area of the trapezoids would approach the area under the function. And we can see this as we increase the number of trapezoids. Now if we go back to where there are four trapezoids just for a moment, we can easily explain why the pattern of the coefficients starts with one, ends with one, and the remaining coefficients are two. If we take a look at this first trapezoid, notice how in the area formula, we would use this base once and this base once, where the lengths would be function values, but then when we take a look at the second trapezoid, we use this base again in the second trapezoid, which is the reason why the second function value has a coefficient of two. Notice how this base is also used twice in the second and third trapezoid, and again, this base here is also used twice in the third and fourth trapezoid, ending with only using this last base once. So that's the reason why we have the pattern of the coefficients. Now let's go back and take a look at our example. We've already recognized that a is equal to one and b equals five and n equals eight. So delta x, which is equal to b minus a divided by n would be five minus one divided by eight, which is four eighths or one half, or if we want 0 0.5. Which means the width of each subinterval will be 0 0.5 units, which should also be the height of each trapezoid. Now let's go ahead and list all of our values from x sub zero through, in this case, x sub eight. So x sub zero would be equal to a or one. And now we'll just add delta x each time to find the subsequent x value. So x sub one would be one plus 0.5 or 1.5. X sub two would be two. X sub three would be 2.5. X sub four would be three x sub five would be 3.5, x sub six would be four, x sub seven is 4.5, and finally x sub eight is equal to five, which is also b. So now the given def integral is going to be approximately equal to, we'll have b minus a divided by two n, or again, one half times delta x. By using this formula exactly, we would have five minus one divided by two times eight. And then we'll have times this sum here. Remember the first coefficient is one, so we'll have just f of x sub zero or f of one plus the remaining coefficients are two until we get to the last function value. So we'll have two times f of 1.5 plus two times f of two plus two times f of 2.5 plus two times f of three plus two times f of 3.5 plus two times f of four plus two times f of 4.5 and finally we're at x sub eight so we end with f of five. And now to find these function values, we could sub 
all these x values into our integrand, or the function f of x equals cosine x divided by x, but we'll go ahead and use a graphing calculator to help us find these values. Looking at this fraction here, we'd have four sixteenths or one fourth, and now we'll find all these function values using the graphing calculator. So the first thing we should do is make sure that we're in radian mode. So let's press the mode key. In the third row, notice how I do have radian highlighted. If it wasn't highlighted, I would arrow down to radian, press enter, and then it would be in radian mode. Next, let's go ahead and type in our function into y1. So I'll press y equals, and we'll type in cosine x divided by x. And now that our function is in y1, we can use function notation using y sub one to determine these function values. So I'm gonna press second mode to go to the home screen and then to find f of one, which would be cosine one divided by one, I can simply press vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and then in parentheses, one. So the first function value is approximately 0 0.5403 to four decimal places. Next we have two times f of 1.5. So I'll press two, again vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and in parentheses 1.5. This is a nice way to avoid having to evaluate this using cosine x divided by x each time. So if we press enter, two times f of 1.5 is approximately 0.0943. Let's go ahead and show one more, and I'll just write down the values of these to four decimal places. So we have two times f of two, and a quick way to do this would be to press second enter. This brings up the last entry, which we can then edit. So for two, I could change 1.5 to 2.0, which would save some time. And this would be approximately negative 0.4161. And again, to save time, I've already found the remaining function values, so I'll just copy them down. And then finally, one-fourth times this sum would be negative 0 0.4953. So this would be our approximation or our estimate for the given def integral when using the trapezoid rule with n equals eight. I realize the directions do say keep at least two decimal places for accuracy, but I usually prefer four. I hope you found this explanation helpful.